Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Sunit D. Rosario, and in this series we're diving into ZBrush, the industry standard sculpting software used in films, games, and more. Let's get started on your ZBrush journey. So here we are in ZBrush. This is how the interface looks like when you first launch the software. I am using ZBrush version 2022.0.1. It will be quite similar interface for whichever version you will be using. Now first, as we can see over here, there are lots of different projects which you can choose and start working on it. This is called Lightbox. We can close this window by clicking on this light box button. This is the canvas where we will be doing the sculpting. Now if I try to do something over here, you can see this is what we will get. This is not actually what we are looking for. So I will press Ctrl N to clear out the canvas. This will create a new canvas over here to work with. You can also press Ctrl Z to undo a couple of times to go back to the default canvas. And now let's see how we can bring any geometry over here in the canvas. Over here on the right side, we have Tool. Click on this button and then we can choose any geometry or 3D meshes from here. Now let's select Sphere 3D from here. And now if you left click and drag on the canvas, we can bring out a sphere over here. You can either left click drag or right click drag, both will do the same thing. And now if you are thinking about sculpting on this sphere, you will not be able to do that. It will create more and more spheres over here if you continue to left-click and drag on the canvas. So we don't need these many spheres. I will press Ctrl N to clear out the canvas. Now let's just drag once to create only one sphere over here. And to activate the brush for sculpting, we have to turn on Edit from here. Once we turn on edit, it will activate the brushes and the alphas over here on the left hand side. Now let's click on edit or you can press T which is the hot key for edit. And as you can see, these are activated over here. This is the brushes menu, this is the stroke menu and so on. We will learn about all these options on the next part. And now if we try to sculpt on it, then it will pop up a message. To enable sculpting, please convert this 3D primitive to a polymesh 3D by pressing the Make Polymesh 3D button in the tool palette. That means we have to convert this 3D object to polymesh 3D and then only we can sculpt on it. For that, on the right hand side, click on this Make Polymesh 3D button. And you can see a new layer has been created as PM3D Sphere. And now finally you can start sculpting on this object. I know, it's a lot of work to do before sculpting, but trust me you will get used to it eventually, and you will love this software once you get the hang of it. Now for sculpting, it is highly recommended to use a pen tab to sculpt on the object. It will give a much better result than sculpting using a mouse. For now, since this is a beginner's lesson, and I am assuming many of you guys are just starting to use ZBrush and don't have pen tab, I will be using mouse for this lesson and show you how to navigate the canvas using a mouse. Now ZBrush have default buttons which you can use to navigate around. You can left click on these buttons and drag to move. Similarly we have zoom in and zoom out. And at the bottom we have rotation. But we will not use these buttons for navigating. 
Every time you have to go down there to move around in canvas, it will slow you down while sculpting a model. Instead, we can right-click on canvas and drag the mouse to rotate around. Or you can also use left-click and drag for rotation. I prefer to use right-click for rotation, since left-click is used for sculpting the model. Now by holding Alt and right-click drag to pan or move around the canvas. You can also use Alt and left-click to move around. Now for zoom in and zoom out, you have to press Alt, right-click, then release Alt and drag left-right to zoom in and zoom out. This one is a little tricky, but eventually you will get used to it by a little bit of practice. It's worth investing some time to get comfortable with these controls, as ZBrush's unique interface is designed for efficiency and creativity. After a bit of consistent practice, you'll find it much easier to navigate and focus on creating stunning models. There are a lot of things that you can learn by simply practicing and exploring ZBrush on your own. Let's see some of the basic things that we have to know before we start sculpting on ZBrush. Over here on top of the canvas, you can see the history bar, which visually tracks your actions. Each tick represents an action you've performed. If you press Ctrl Z to undo a couple of times, you can see the orange highlight is going back step by step. You can stop wherever you want, and then if you start sculpting again, it will start from that particular step. One of the common issues that most of the beginners face is navigating the canvas. Suppose you have zoomed out quite a lot and you are not able to see your model or you are not able to navigate at that place. No need to freak out, just press F on keyboard and it will bring back your model on the canvas. Suppose you have lost your model completely from the canvas, then you just need to press F to bring it back. On the top right corner of the canvas, there is this human face icon which represents the front and side rotations. If you rotate the canvas, notice that the human icon is also rotating along, which will be very helpful for us to know how is our model rotated in 3D space. Now suppose you are stuck in a weird angle, and you are not able to go back to proper front or side view. Just right-click and drag to rotate, then if you press shift key, it will snap it on the front view. Let me show you what I meant by that. Let's sculpt a simple T over here to make it more understandable. Something like this should do. Now suppose you are stuck in some weird position like this. Just press F to bring it back on the canvas. Then right-click drag to start rotating, and now if you press Shift key, it will snap to the front side. You can snap it to left, right, front, top, bottom, wherever you want. Just rotate it on that direction, and then press Shift key to snap it to that particular view. Now then, let's talk about undo and redo. Let's do something like this. And then like that. And over here like this. Notice that the history bar is increasing with every action I am doing over here. You can drag the slider and go back any step you want. The hotkey for undo is Ctrl Z and the hotkey for redo is Ctrl Shift and Z. But be careful if you go back a couple of steps and do any change on that step, you can't go back anymore even if you press Ctrl Z to undo. It will undo from that particular step only. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching this introductory tutorial on ZBrush. I hope you found it helpful and are excited to dive deeper into this amazing software. If you enjoyed the video, 
please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future tutorials. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let me know what topics you'd like me to cover next. Your support and feedback truly motivate me to create more content for you. Until next time, happy sculpting!